Dang it all, I really thought we were done fielding legal shenanigans. I guess nothing ought to surprise us by now. On April 16th, 2015, Allison Tiemann and the Honey Badger Brigade, founded by three women and involving a highly diverse staff of volunteers, creators, and lovers of free expression, opened a booth at the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo. The Expo also hosted a feminist panel titled Women Into Comics. Allison Tiemann and Sage Gerard attended, and in response to a question about men's rights activists, Allison requested and was given the panel moderator's permission to speak. She did so briefly in relation to the topic brought up by the panelists. But um, that's just it. Where, where, what has happened? What, what, at what point did all of a sudden did, did it become a dirty thing for women to be into this stuff? Like in the eyes of so many of these men's rights activist types? Or Would you like us to field that question? Huh? Would you like us to field that yeah, question? Because sure. I am a men's rights activist, so you can, okay. you can hate on me. The reason why I don't like feminism is because you promote this idea that women are defined by being victims. If you look at the context of all of your issues, men also face considerable problems as well. And they need to be brought into the story, and not just for men's sake, because this hides men's vulnerability, also for the sake of challenging the notion that women are defined as victims. The full discussion is linked in the low bar. If you check it out, you can hear that there was no conflict, only a brief exchange of thoughts. A small contingent of feminist supporters, however, later claimed that Allison derailed the conversation. The next morning, the Expo forcibly evicted Allison and the Brigade, despite the group operating well within the rules of the Expo and its policies of conduct. We were not given a chance to dispute the alleged complaints. The organization violated its own stated policy in the process, and released conflicting claims regarding its reasons for our removal, defaming us with false accusations of disruptive conduct to rationalize its decision to censor the group's views. These accusations included some claims published in a Mary Sue article and subsequently promoted by the Expo as the reason behind the expulsion. The article, whose writer never contacted Allison or any of the other Badgers for clarification or explanation, presented a clearly satirical joke as a literal statement of fact, and included statements even their own commenters questioned, falsely accused the group of deceiving the Expo, and also of harassment and disruptive behavior. Those accusations were repeated, and that article cited, by various media sources following the incident. In response, the Brigade pursued legal action against both Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo and the Mary Sue. After initially serving notice of legal action to the defendants, we ran across an interesting obstacle. An odd network of legal entities surrounding Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo. To complicate matters, upon evicting the group, the Expo had blocked Allison's access to their contract with her, making it impossible to refer to it to find the correct name. The suit was originally filed against the federal corporate entity bearing nearly the same name as Calgary Expo and founded by the Expo's founder. We received a response stating that we had contacted the wrong person, followed by the argument that if the entity we contacted were the entity responsible for the Calgary Comics and Entertainment Expo, the Expo staff's actions were valid. Following notification on behalf of that entity that it was not the Expo's parent company, we re-examined the various companies associated with it, all registered under the same owner's name, and figured that the correct entity was one with a deceptively non-corporate-sounding name containing the word committee, and which was not federally registered, but which was listed on receipts we had for the Honey Badger Booth registration. Due to the confusion, it was necessary to apply for an order granting leave to amend the civil claim, and a conference call was scheduled to allow the defendants the opportunity to contest the application. Following this short conference call in January 2016, during which one defendant's representative put the call on hold and played circus music across the line, the plaintiff's application was approved. The judge granted broad approval, in fact, also allowing the plaintiff to fix two typographical errors with which the Mary Sue had taken substantial issue. On June 20, 2016, 
The Honey Badger Brigade was advised by Calgary Expo International Incorporated that it had misled the Alberta Provincial Court by advising a judge at a June 2, 2016 pretrial that Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo Incorporated was not the corporate entity the Honey Badger Brigade needed to sue. Subsequently, its lawyer, Elmer Chu, advised that he did not have the correct information before him at the pretrial conference and that it was the proper party to sue. In other words, the January conference call was unnecessary. The defendants tried and failed to get the suit thrown out prior to any hearing. Then they took up the initial court date arguing for a summary dismissal, including in their arguments an extended rehashing of their complaints about typos and an attempt to blame the plaintiff for the defendant's deception of the court regarding the name issue. Due to the defendant's extensive quibbling, the summary dismissal was the only issue the court was able to rule on during the initial one-and-a-half-day hearing in January of 2017. In November of 2017, the group returned to court to hear the opposing attorney attempt yet again to argue for summary dismissal and attempt to get Allison's evidence dismissed out of hand. Finally, Allison got the chance to give her testimony. After hearing Allison's testimony, the defendants began asking to discuss out-of-court settlements, beginning with threats and cajoling, but eventually begging for a meeting. They initially displayed receptiveness, verbally agreeing to Allison's terms, but over the next month, settlement talks went nowhere and ended with the defendants threatening a frivolous defamation suit. We contacted the clerk to request new dates for the continuance of the trial. They have informed us that their earliest available dates are in February of 2019. Our legal agent, Harry Capito, has sent a politely worded request to the judge presiding over this matter to select an earlier date. We are awaiting word from the court. This is a trial update as of February 8, 2018. 